how to write a number as a product of prime factors. Firstly, what is a prime number? So a prime number has exactly two factors, these being one and itself. So for example, the number two, that has the factors one and two. They're the only numbers we can divide it by without a remainder. As there are exactly two factors, two is a prime number. The number six, on the other hand, has got four factors, one, two, three, and six, so it's not prime. And one that often confuses people is the number one itself. Well, one has only got one factor itself, so one isn't a prime number. Now we know what prime numbers are, we can write out numbers as a product of prime factors. So let's start with the number 30. We're going to use a factor tree to do this. So the number 30 goes at the top of our tree. We're then looking for two factors which will multiply together to give the number 30. Now there are multiple pairings we could use. We could do 2 times 15, we could do 5 times 6. Doesn't matter what we pick, I'm going to go with 2 times 15. And we have branches coming down to our two numbers. Now 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle that one. 15 isn't prime, that's equal to 3 times 5. So we'll have our branches coming down with 3 and 5 at the bottom of them. Now they're both prime numbers, so let's circle those as well. So our factor tree has come to an end with the numbers 2, 3 and 5. So 30 is equal to 2 times 3 times 5. Now as I said at the beginning, we could have chosen any pairing that would multiply together to give 30. So for example, we could have gone with 3 and 10 and then split the 10 into 2 times 5, but we'd still get exactly the same answer, a 2, a 3 and a 5. So 30 as the product of prime factors is 2 times 3 times 5. Let's try the same thing for the number 140 now. So again we put 140 at the top of our factor tree and we're looking for a pair of factors which will multiply together to give 140. Let's go with 10 times 14. Now neither of these are prime, so we're going to split them again. So 10 is equal to 2 times 5. Now these are both prime, so let's circle them. 14 is equal to 2 times 7. Again, they're both prime, so if we circle them, we've now got to the bottom of our factor tree, we've got a 2, a 5, another 2, and a 7. So 140 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5 times 7. Now as we've got a 2 times 2, we can rewrite this as 2 squared times 5 times 7. And again, it wouldn't matter whether we chose the pair 10 times 14 at the beginning, we could have chosen 7 times 20, it doesn't matter, we'd always get the same result. Let's try a trickier one now, 2904. We're going to do exactly the same thing, starting off our factor tree, a little bit trickier to find a pairing now, but 2904 is equal to 4 times 726. Neither of these are prime numbers, so let's split them again. 726 is equal to 6 times 121, and 4 is equal to 2 times 2. Now they are prime, so let's circle them. But our left-hand side can keep going, so 6 is equal to 2 times 3. They're both prime, so we'll circle those. And 121 is equal to 11 times 11. Again, 11 is a prime number, so let's circle those. So at the bottom of our factor tree, we've got two, a three, two 11s, and another two twos. So 2,904 must be equal to two cubed times three times 11 squared. In our examples so far, I've mentioned a couple of times that it doesn't matter which pairing of factors you start with, we're always gonna get the same answer. Now the reason for this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. This states that every integer larger than one can be written in exactly one way as the product of one or more primes. So looking at this with one of our examples, we've worked out that 2904 equals two cubed times three times 11 squared. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic tells us that however we split it up, the only primes we are gonna use are two, three, and 11, and they have to be to the exact same powers that we've got here. The 2 is cubed, 3 is just to the power of 1, and the 11 has to be squared. This is the only way we can write the number 2904 as a product of prime numbers. 
and this applies, as the theorem says, to every integer larger than 1. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.